God bless you. We are grateful to the Lord for his mercy. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter chapter 5. Say amen. All right, we're going to read uh, beginning in verse 8 through 11. Beginning at verse 8, the Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I want to pray. Together, if you are close to someone, join hands with them and let us pray. Our Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this day. Thank you for the testimonies of your healing love. You're such a great God, and we honor you. And thank you for caring so much for the world to send your son that we might have life realize and we understand that it's because of your son dying and paying the price for our salvation and our deliverance that we have these blessed testimonies that we hear today and so we thank you and give your name to praise in Jesus name amen can you give the Lord a clap offering (laughs) thank you Lord thank you Lord you know they sang this song devotion is all about you and it's really ministered to my heart because that's really what it's all about no matter what healings take place and all the testimonies should point to his great goodness and mercy you know God paid a dear price for us to be free and he wants us free he wants us free that's what he said to me some weeks ago He said, I paid a dear price for people, and I want them free. That's on his end, right? On our end, we have to receive. And as we receive those, you heard those testimonies, a few of the others, few of those that God touched several, but those are three that you heard that uh, they were receiving from God. And God is available. His power, his love, his divine energy is available. And on the last night of the crusade, God said to tell them about um, compassion for, thank you, for the abandoned and how his bowels yearn to set people. That's the Savior. He just literally yearns in his bowels that people would be free. Free from hurts of every kind. Free from emotional bondage. Free from the fears, the anxieties, stress, the anger, the resentment, the bitterness. Just free from that. Jesus died that we might live. You can live and enjoy life to the full because of Jesus Christ. Not because you're excellent, studious, 
not because of those things, but because of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he it is that shall trample down our enemies. So God gave me this here today, and I just wanted to thank the Lord. You heard the testimonies, and you may have heard Apostle Aaron's name called, but I want to tell you that every one of these leaders have the power flowing through their lives. Hallelujah. And not only these leaders, but the people that are saved and filled, you can have them pray for you or a loved one or somebody, and they hear from God, and they can dispense that word of life. I've seen it in action, many of them, and I want you to know that it's the hand of God working through earthen vessels, right? Paul said we have this treasure in earthen vessels or clay pots or jars of clay that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. I am so grateful. In this passage of scripture here in 1 Peter, <coughs> if I did have a title, well, most of the time I preach without a title. We're getting better at it. We have to stop and pause and do the thing that we were taught. <laughs> but I would just title it, After You Have Suffered a oh, Wow. After you have suffered a while, and I know there are so many questions. Lord, how long? Lord, what's going on? Father, when? But God says after you've suffered a while, that may mean for some that the large part of the things that were happening to you are coming to an, an end. And that's what I was feeling. That's what I was feeling when he spoke that to me. But he wanted us to understand some things that I will be brief, and I want to share this with you. Shifting from understanding and receiving God's love to the things he allows us to go through and the whys. Is that all right? Shifting now, and he's given us several weeks on understanding and receiving the love that comes from God, how he loves us. So he said, shifting from understanding and receiving God's love to the things he allows us to face and why. There's so many questions in the minds of God's people. And as we read, Peter, I'm going to read the first verses as well. Beginning at ver verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And, somebody say and, when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. That's my motivation. Are you with me? He said, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, he shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. Likewise, ye younger, he shifts the attention from the leaders now to the body. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the elder. 
Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. In other words, put on the apron of humility. For can be translated as because. God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. How? By casting all your care upon him because he careth for you. Wow, that's a part of the um, the thoughts and context of what he's sharing. The emphasis now is on the latter part. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walk about, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, resist him, or whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And verse 10 is the main verse I want to emphasize. But the God of all grace who hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after, somebody say after, that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory, dominion, glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to walk through this a little bit. Uh, a little bit more concerning this. Uh, in verse 3, he says to the chief elders, uh, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And so he just briefly caught my attention. And then uh, looking at it a little more um, in some of the commentators, it says, showing a pattern. Let them see a pattern in your life. You know, people aren't easily convinced. And sometimes they need to see long-term patterns. You know, I, I remember one lady many years ago came to me and says, I, I watched your daughter. I've been watching her for a few years now. And I see a consistency and she made me want to follow the Lord. It is important to be consistent and remain consistent in what you feel God is all about and how you do service to him. So the same people that are convinced today may not be convinced next year unless there's a consistency Unless there is a pattern of good works. Isn't that right? I heard Paul tell Titus, showing yourself a pattern of good works. So that the adversary, when he comes to dispute and, and lie, uh, he will literally be ashamed. Because of the pattern that you've laid so that everybody can see it. Oh, I love Jesus today. Hallelujah. As we move on, verse um, 4, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive the crown of glory that fades not away. Verse 5 says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourself to the elder. All of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility because God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Now, that's a powerful thing here. We in, encourage the whole of the body to put on the apron of servitude or humility, right? And after he makes this statement, verse 6 says, he says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now, the word is a passive verb, so it, it, it actually means be humbled or it means permit yourselves to be humble, or it means allow yourself to be humbled, which means that there's a, there's, there's, there's a hand at work in your life. 
and that hand is allowing things to happen and that hand is on you and sometimes it gets frustrating because that hand won't allow something else maybe more pleasant to come in but that thing is still there frustrating and oppressing and vexing but he said he said allow now yourself to be humbled so that God May exalt you in due time. Now look at now, 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 now. That really, really spoke to my heart. It's like the Lord said, I, I want to tell the body, I want, first of all, I want them to receive my love and understand that I love them. No matter what it looks like down here, no matter what they go through, I love them. And I want them to digest this. Let it become a part of their lives so that whenever they go through things, they can have a right attitude until I exalt them. Right? That makes sense, y'all? And so he says, uh, uh, this word means allow yourself now to be humble, what it, which means that God is allowing us to pass through certain situations, certain things that are unpleasant. But God has a divine purpose in allowing it. Even the world knows and understands that if a person suffers a lot of misfortunes and, and keep the right attitude and so on, it makes them a better person in character. Even the world knows that. But, but, so he says, drinks. humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, which means allow God to humble you, all right? Now, I know this don't sound like a shouting message, and, and it don't make, you, don't make you feel like you want to just jump up and shout. I realize that. And, and, and when I eat collard greens, It sure don't taste like applesauce. Uh, <laughs> but the applesauce don't last too long. The collard greens do more for me. They can add some irons and even thin my blood if my blood's too thick. Now y'all got to hear what I'm trying to say. Everything that seems distasteful may not necessarily be bad for me. So I... I I, I love ice cream. As a matter of fact, God had to deliver me from it. And, you know, I was eating so much. And he spoke to me and he said, um, you know, you, you got a, a real craving for rich food. He said, that's God to help you. This was years ago now, so I, I'm a little bit better now. But anyway. And I said, no, I got this. <laughs> now, I didn't say it out loud, all right? In my heart, I was like, no, I got this. You know. So I went out to try to show him I got this. I said, well, I'll just, you know, I'll just quit. I mean, I'll just cut down back on it, maybe about 80%. And then, I, boy, I started eating more than I was eating. <laughs> After about two weeks, I looked up. I said, Lord, I, I need your help. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> so, permitting ourselves to be humbled is a reason for it. One translation says they should permit God to humble them. Verse 7 says, casting all your care... Tossing your entire worry and all of your anxieties upon him. Because God knows what to do. He says, trust in me with all your heart. Do not lean to your own understanding. So this great big God with all the wisdom that he has sees what's going to happen 5, 10, and 15, and 20 years down the road for our lives. He gives us wisdom according to this great knowledge. And so if we follow step by step what he's telling us, you can't help but land to your destiny. 
because you've got the great navigator in control. But now if I try to do it myself, I can only see a very little bit. <laughs> but the one that can see everything, if I allow him to take me through, no matter what I'm going through, I find that he's a wise, wise master builder. You look back three, five years down the road at what you've passed through, and then you begin to see fruit of what God is doing in your life, and you begin to say, now, Lord, there's no way on this earth that I could have changed or come to this blessedness in my own. God has a path for the just. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Proverbs says the path of the just is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. It gets brighter and brighter and brighter as we follow God. Hallelujah. I'm not where I was 20 years ago. Hallelujah. I'm not where I was 30 years ago. I went back in memory one time looking back where I came from 20 and 30 years ago. And I can only thank God. Because it was his guiding light. It was his hand upon my life. Sometimes that mighty hand was allowing me to suffer some things that was distasteful. But his hand was still there. And sometimes when I felt like I couldn't take no more, he would simply give more grace to me. Because he wanted me to go on through. He was making and still making something beautiful out of my life. And God is working in these earthen vessels and these clay pots. Hallelujah to create a, a wonderful vase for the glory of God. And after he takes us through the kiln, there is a beam and there's a brightness that takes place like you've never seen before. It may get hot sometimes, but if we allow God to take us through, we that Job said after I've been tried, after the furnace I've gone through, after I've suffered a while, then the God of glory will do something in my soul, in my body, in my character, in my perception, in my light. He will do something to me that the world can't do for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul called him a wise master builder. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, he knows what he's doing. I remember going through, and I, I remember going through at one point, and I wanted to ask him, do you really know what you're doing? And I felt like it, but you know, I wasn't crazy. I wouldn't ask him that bit. But he answered that which was in my mind. He said, I know what I'm doing. He's a good God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I tell everybody, these are the best days of my life. You say, well, brother, brother, brother Harry, you, wait a minute, now you, you suffer some stuff, man. Now how can you say these are the better days? My soul is satisfied. Hallelujah. It's not the stuff down here that I'm longing for. My soul has been satisfied. The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Woo. Mm, mm, mm. David said, happy, blessed, prosperous, well off, fortunate is the one that put their trust in him. Come on, give God some glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I heard one writer said, humility is a gain, not a loss. It puts the believer in God's favor and saves him from pride that would destroy him and rob him of future glory. The 
because the mother God's in control here. Hallelujah. <laughs> we cast all of our cares, toss them over on him. I don't like this person doing this to me. God says, it's all right. They did it to me. Don't curse them. Bless them. Isn't that right? Bless them. Bless those that persecute you, right? Do good to them that harm you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. Somebody say, God, what world do you come from? <laughs> what he's saying that the spirit of Christ doesn't need the person to respond right for it to do right. The spirit of Christ is a do right spirit anyhow. So it's going to do right even in wrong. Look at somebody say, I got that spirit. Now, don't brag now, but just, you know, be. But God is good saints. He's been so good. I had one of those nights. You know, every time we experience God setting people free, you know, the adversary come back and get real mad. So, uh, you know, the last couple nights, he's been real mad. But I finally understood to the point where it doesn't bother me. You know, when, I, when it used to happen, sometimes he would, I can't go into detail what he does because I don't want to spook nobody, but the whole the idea. <laughs> but sometimes he would challenge us. Sometimes you feel, you feel real challenged. But let me go back a few years. I'll share this with you. Something happened to me and during the night he was challenging me. And I woke up and said, I will kill you. <laughs> now that, that sounds funny. Right? He made me so mad. And see, he doesn't play fair. So I was like, hmm, where'd that come from, you know? We don't know. <laughs> We don't know what, how, why God take us through. I'm, and I'm making it clear now. But, but when, when I thought about it, I was like, hmm, well, that's, that's kind of strong there, you know. But he pushed me, made me so mad of pressing me. And I'm trying to sleep. And uh, <laughs> so I said, well, maybe I shouldn't have said that, you know. But the whole idea was God knows what's in us. Isn't that right? And he has to work that out of us. And once he works that out of us, when you're pressured and mistreated, you're not going to say something that you can't take back or if it goes out, right? I'm trying to share kind of how he was telling me. Peter said, after... You have suffered a while. So don't, don't feel bad that God is working in our lives. Remember, he's the potter and we're the clay. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm almost done here. So let's, how do we humble ourselves? We, we continue to toss a roll over. Every burden, every concern, every anxiety. Lord, I'm turning this over to you. You know why this is happening. I don't. So in order for me to have the, keep the right attitude, then I want to do that. Why do we keep the, See, in other words, the trials are not designed to destroy us, but God uses them to better us make us better people and when we look at it like this his mighty hand is there he's not we're not out of control as far as what God is concerned his mighty hand is there so having the right attitude is very key in receiving what God intends when he allows things are you with me 
Now, because you and I know that trials can do us good or bad, it is God's design, design that we improve our character and the things and for him to work things out of us that are not there, that, that shouldn't be there, to make us more presentable for his glory and on a larger scale. And so we must allow that to happen and, if, and don't think that God has abandoned us or forsaken us and he's mad with us and all of those things. But let's look at it like, no, I'm going, this is a process and God is allowing me to go through this process because there are things that he knows that would, could be a detriment to us if he does not do something, you know, because the time we're living in, evil forces are getting worse. They're not getting better, right? And so verse now, now so uh, how do we do it? We toss and roll over every anxiety, every concern. Lord, I'm giving this over to you. There's no point in me brooding and stewing over it. I'm giving it over to you. Everybody with me? We must roll it over. We must not harbor anger and frustration and bitterness. We must roll it over on him, casting all, tossing all of our cares on him because he cares for us. And then God, in turn, will give us grace and diffuse any anxiety or any pain or frustration. But it's only as we toss it over on him. Isn't that right? But if we don't toss it over on him and we try to carry it, it can make us anger and sometimes even make us bitter. God does not want us to become bitter. The idea behind tests and trials is a divine purpose behind it. So let's look at the divine purpose behind it so that we can go on and say, okay, this too will pass. It's not forever. It will pass. Now, if you're going through the same thing over and over again, week after week, month after month, you have to be in which it means this, that we're not listening. Don't get mad with me, but that's what it means. You're not, you're not listening. When you listen to God, when you seek him, God, why is this happening? Somewhere you're trying to teach me something that either I'm not learning or it's taken me a long time to learn. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with God. He's such a good God. He is such a wonderful Savior. He will give grace. If you need grace, he will give you grace. If you need strength, he will give you strength. If you need wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. If you need understanding, he gives us understanding. Whatever we need, he will give it to us so that we will become better for his name's sake. Remember, it's all about him. Not about us, isn't that right? When you see a vessel that's, a, a, a ceramic vessel that's been carefully uh, shaped and fashioned and on display, you know, you know it's pretty, but you know somewhere or another that potter was quite skillful, right? I say this before years ago. I looked. I looked at a saxophone. Saxophone. I was contemplating getting one and playing. And this was about thirty years ago. And I looked at it, and there it was in the case, and it looked so. It was brand new, and that was shining. So I said, "Oh my God, that's pretty." And then the Holy Spirit said, "See that vessel?" I said, "Yeah, beautiful, ain't it?" He said, "Yeah." As beautiful as that vessel is, all it can do is lay right there. Can't make no sound. Can't do nothing. He said, unless the breath of the player flows through that beautiful shining instrument, no sound is coming out of it. You might as well give some give God to praise. Is that right? <laughs> I never forgot that. I never forgot that. It's all about him. Took me some years. Took me some years. Because when I started out, I wanted it to be about me. That's all I knew. I didn't know any better. But the faithfulness of God, that's all I can say. He's so faithful, man. God is faithful. Hallelujah. He doesn't reward us based on what we have need, but he allows us to take us through. So verse 8, now look at verse 8. Verse 8 said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. 
When we're just steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, verse 8, be temperate, level-headed, of a sober mind, watchful, alert. See those words? That's basically what it means. Be temperate, level-headed. Have a calmness about you. Isn't that right? You know, you don't want to do that, you have a calmness about you as God's children, right? That's what the Lord is doing. He's making us beautiful. He's making us beautiful. Because if it's an unbeliever, you've testified to an unbeliever that God is good and he changes your life. And then they walk in on you fussing, and kicking and carrying on. Then they say, um, what did you say the Lord could do? You, you know what I'm saying? And the people look at our lives. They look at our lives. And we're always under scrutiny. Eyes are always watching us. I wish it wasn't so, but it's true, right? We're always under scrutiny. So let's do our best to allow the Lord to work through us. And uh, an enemy is, verse, an enemy is seeking after the flock. This is Peter was basically making them aware. And one of the most effective weapons that he uses is pride. And so Peter wanted the flock to know, be alert, watchful, and allow yourself to be humbled so that you won't become a target of the enemy. He loves pride. He, he knows what that is because he was kicked out of heaven because of pride. So that tempts him. So an enemy is seeking after them, and one of the most effective weapons he uses is pride. He's a deceiver and varies in his approach, in his tactics. That's why they're called wiles, strategies. The way he works schemes and plots. So he has strategy to attack and oppress God's people. So he says, um, that's why Peter is giving them and saying, roll all your concern, your anxieties on God. Don't try to deal with them. Don't try to work it out. Roll them over on God. And get strength from God and get wisdom from God. Let God enable us in whatever we're going through. And then he says, be sober and watchful. Because your adversary, the devil, as the roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And uh, I had this experience when I went to the, the zoo one time, my family and I. And uh, I think this was a puma that was in this cage. There and he was going, just let you. And I thought, what in the world's wrong with that cat, you know? And he was just going for just just minutes and minutes and, and, and at the time. And that in my mind, that was a flash of Satan. He's always looking, just going about like a roaring lion, like a like a wild beast that's hungry. That's what what it really is saying. Just looking for somebody that he can tear apart, kill for his own purpose. And so Paul or Peter was saying. Be alert now because of your adversary. This is his nature. This is his attitude. Looking for somebody to devour. So he said, so how do you, what do you do? Resist him. How? By being steadfast. Resist him, resist him how? By being committed to what you believe. Isn't that right? All right? Now, so now let me, let me, let me finish what he said. He said, okay. He's a deceiver and varies in his approach. Comes sometimes as an angel of light and sometimes as a roaring lion. When the lion walks about and he's near the flock, it's time to caution. Time for caution at the sheepfold, right? Now you picture the deers and some of the others uh, when the lion or tiger or any of them it's coming near you. I'm sure you've seen that on Animal Wild Kingdom or whatever or some of the other things that may show you how they operate. They're very sneaky. I've seen them 
on TV, just in the grass, just slowly, slowly moving about. They see this gazelle or this deer off to themselves. Very seldom will they attack the whole flock because the shepherd is near. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? All they want to do is he'll miss about and find one straggling and wandering, get distracted over there. He's over here looking, and the flock is going on, and he's over there eating and so on. And next thing you know, he looks up, and he looks right into the eyes of a lion. And now it's too late. He takes off and runs with everything he's got. But the lion overtakes him. I'm just painting this picture so that what Paul, what Peter was sharing, that it gets a bit serious. Look at somebody say, stay with the foe. The shepherd. Remember David in the Bible. How God so anointed him. And when the lion came to attack the sheep, the anointing came over him. He slew that lion. Then there came a bear to attack the flock. God anointed him so he slew both of them. But it was the foe, right? God is the picture here of David. Or David is a picture of Christ when we stay in the fold. God will protect his flock. He'll protect us, but the enemy, we become targets of the enemy when we wander off by ourselves through whatever, whether it's pride, misunderstanding, or whatever it may be. That's what the enemy wants. And I said one time I remember you ever seen when you're cooking on the grill, you see? Take one of those hot, hot coals at its hottest point with a prong or something and set it aside and just leave it there. And see how long it stays real hot. It cools real fast. But the other coals that, that you didn't remove from the coals is still hot because they draw from one another. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> God has made it that way. How many times have I come to church and I was, the, if truth be told, I'd rather be doing something else at that time. But there's safety in it. Get here and somebody has a wonderful, encouraging word for me. Why? It was God seeing my need. I can tell you, I, I, let me go back a little bit more. I'm about done. But I, I remember when I didn't have no money. I remember going to the church and my gas hand was on E. And I had computed now, okay, there's about seven miles of this way, seven miles back. So even my reserve tank may not handle this. So I said, well, don't have anything to draw from. I'm going. We head and get to the house of God. This is at the other church I came out of. And I, we were some of the last one to close the doors, you know. We were all first one there and last one out. And uh, so we, they be cl we'd be closing shop, some of the last one, all oh, time and time and time again. Brother Larry, give me a, what we call them a hallelujah handshake. That's a handshake with money put in it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was building my faith in God who sees what I go through he's a good God he's a good Savior I 
know it a little bit better now. He's a good Savior. He loves us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So stay close to the fold. The lion walks about as a chicken whom he may devour. devour. The lion's roar can create fear and frighten the sheep. And a frightened sheep, the author said, may bolt from the flock and become easy prey of the devil. Each sheep needs to stay with the fold for safety. Hallelujah. Then he said, a sheep is no match for a lion. And we are no match for the devil in ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Isn't that the analogy? Come on, no, I mean, that's what he's saying. Hallelujah. Thank God that Jesus is the mighty lion. Mm. And the chief shepherd. He'll do us good. So a believer can ward off Satan by being steadfast in the face. Steadfast, strong, firm, sure. Steadfast, strong, firm, and sure. That's what he's saying. So now look at verse 10. I'm, I'm wrapping this up. So if, if this is how we can ward off Satan by being steadfast, committed, sure. Peter says, all right, now he's showing us now why we may be suffering certain things. Verse 10. But the God of all grace hath called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after, somebody say after. after. After that you've suffered a while, do what to you? Make you perfect. All right, let's stop with the word perfect. It means adjust. Putting parts into right relationships and connection. It means fit together. And then uh, one other author says that um, it means to restore, to supply that which is missing, to mend that which is broken. So suffering, uh, uh, if accepted in humility and trust and love, can repair the weaknesses of a man's character and the greatness which uh, so far is not there. So God, he said, after you suffered a while, he repair you. He restore you. He begins to speak words into our brokenness, words that hurt us, so, things that have hurt us so bad, wondering why, why, as you've heard some of the testimonies, why things are as they are. God comes with a word of restoration and begin to heal those broken places in our heart. And so Peter said, after you've suffered a while, after you've suffered sufficiently, then the God of all grace, he's going to come now and begin to restore you. He's going to put things together in your life. Uh, hallelujah. He's going to make you. And, and then, then, then the next thing he says this, he says, you perfect but he says establish you now that word here establish means to make as solid as granite to make as solid and as firm as granite not unstable not fickle not in and out not sometime this and sometimes that but Firm, sure-footed. Anybody hear what I'm saying? This is what he said. Now, after you suffer a while, then this is what God's going to do. Establish you, restore you, and then make you solid as granite. To set firm. It means to turn resolutely in a certain direction. And, and I like that part, to turn resolutely in a, in a certain direction. Because, you know, sometimes some, our minds ain't fully made up about certain things. But when God allows us to go through, it makes us begin to see what really matters. Isn't that right? It helps us to understand that uh, there are certain things that matter a lot more than a lot of things that we may give a lot of credence to, right? But we don't always know that. We can't always get there until God sometimes allows us to go through things 
That's distasteful. And a lot, and then he secures us and helps us. And then you look around and say, you know, wow, I didn't realize I could make it. I didn't realize so and so. But God, God, through what we've gone through. You know how many times you've lost a loved one and you're thinking, wow, boy, besides criticizing, if I hadn't criticized so much, I could have seen some good. You hear what I'm saying? Sometimes when God takes us through, it is to help us to become better people. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so he said, establish you. And then he said, strengthen you, which means to confirm in spiritual knowledge and power. Now, I've noticed this myself that when God begins to, after he begins to restore, and then if I'm not hearing clear, all of a sudden I start to hear him clearer. Wow. God start to hear me. I start to hear that voice clear again. Sometimes the wells get clogged, and so you don't know. You're hearing so much, you don't know which. Sometimes you don't know which voice is God and which, what he's saying. Sometimes the devil is talking and so on. But after God heals and restores you, all of a sudden now his voice becomes clearer to you. God starts to speaking again. God starts to giving you some spiritual assignments again. God Almighty, but he's taking you through. He had to take you through. And I believe that some of you God has taken through and and. And this is a time where God is going to settle you and strengthen you. That's what I was feeling in my heart when God said, you've gone through a lot and you've wondered why. But this is a time where God is going to heal the wounds and it's going to settle you. He turned our hearts in a certain direction. It may have been things that we were looking at. But now, because we've gone through, we realize what matters the most. It's not things. It's a relationship with God. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah. So God has taken us through that we may understand and be better for his glory, for his kingdom. And then, so, and then the last one is to settle you. means to lay a basis for or erect or consolidate the ground to lay a foundation. That's why I said today is all about him. It's all about him. It's about what he wants. We all have desires. But what about his desires? What about what he wants? Isn't that right? They had a commercial, and I'm concluding. They had a commercial years ago. Things go better with Coke. Things go better with Jesus. Things go better with Jesus. Things go better with Jesus. I wonder if you'll lift your hands and begin to thank God and say, you know what, Lord, I'm going on through and I'm not going to be complaining and fussing. I'm going to with the right attitude because I understand better now that your purposes are higher than the little trials that I face each day. And so I yield myself to you and I roll those concerns over on you today. I roll them over and put them in your care. I'm going to trust you with the help of God. And if you say, just give me some thanks and praise, then that's what I'm going to do. Come on, give God some praise and thank you. Hallelujah. And this is what God was bringing to my heart. Now, God, after you've suffered a while, he do these things. He established us, he fixed us, and settled us, and all these things. And what he brought to my mind, he said, one from distorted images of God, understanding better his character and nature. After we've gone through, he began to heal us and help us and confirm us, confirm us in knowledge and power so that we can understand that God is the good one, the devil is the bad one. Isn't that right? And then so that we, like the Bible says, Job uh, said he wouldn't charge God foolishly because he understood that God was good even when he didn't understand. But God has to purify and establish our hearts, right? 
And then you remember James said, purify the heart. He called them double-minded, but what he was saying is that be single-minded in, in, your, in, your, in your heart. Let God establish the heart. So God brought that to me. Another thing he said, uh, what he's doing in, uh, as a result of the thing that uh, he calls us to pass through, uh, for help us to understand who we are and what God has done for us through Calvary and what he's done to defeat the devil. We want us to understand that. And then the fourth thing he mentioned was we want us to walk in wisdom. Humility is not pride. Humility and walk in humility and not pride. We of ourselves are no match for Satan. So he want, he's teaching us these things so that we'll understand those things. And then to learn to love and forgive people for their shortcomings. That's what he said he's teaching his body, that we learn to love people and forgive them for the shortcoming and not holding things and not, you know, wanting things to always go our way. These are things that we have to learn, right? And then he said learning to be thankful. So God is teaching us things that he wants us as a body to do, to walk in holiness, to walk in love, walk in thankfulness and appreciation. I, I had a laugh, and I'm concluding with this. I knew of a man that he was fairly good at deliverance, delivering people from spirits. But he got boastful. And he began to think that he could do these things almost at his will. So he began to boast. I heard him on more than one occasion. And he would tell of the things that he where he cast out demons. And he would say something like, I told the devil, you know who I am. I mean, he was just carrying on. So, and this was brought back to me. So, the devil who varies in his tactics did this. All right, I may not get him in this area of casting out demons, but I'll just attack his children. So he began to attack the children. He saw it, but he didn't grasp it like he would when he was casting out spirits. So the devil went on and says, I'll attack his health. So he began to attack his health, and he began to go down slowly. And it didn't, then the devil went on and says, and I'm going to attack his finances. So he began to attack his finances. So he was doing all these things to him while he was boasting, thinking that he was more than what he was. Look at somebody said, we're no match for the devil. It was only through Jesus Christ. So it's important to walk in humility because if you don't walk in humility, well, the only other thing left is pride, right? But I, I hope this will help somebody, but God was sharing this to me. And so when, you, when we go through things, let's not complain and grumble. Let's know that the greater one, the one that cares more for us than anybody else, is with us. And he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll be, there for, he'll be there for us no matter what it looks like. When people can't be there for you, God will be there for you. He'll be there. He's so trustworthy. In the Bible, well, it makes it clear that he'll stick closer to us than a brother can ever do. And if God be for us, who in the world can be against us? God is for you. Hallelujah. God is for us. After you've suffered, a while and somebody here today has suffered a while. Somebody here has suffered and God is going to elevate you because you suffered a while. Because you suffered a while. But he still wanted us to understand why we suffer, isn't it right? There's restoration. Restoration. Father, in Jesus' name, we 
thank you. Thank you, first of all, for the love that you have for us. You loved us with such a perfect love. You loved us when we really didn't feel loved, and when we didn't feel like we deserved that kind of love, but you loved us still because you're that kind of God. And for some of us, Lord, we've gone through some things that was very painful. And there was a temptation to be a bit bitter, a bit angry. But today we heard your word and realized that you had a higher purpose in all of this. You were not out to destroy us. You were not against us. You were always there for us. Look into the fruit that we'll bear in the days ahead. Knowing the times would be such that the character of a man important so he preserved us until that time so that he was making us and f fashioning us for such a time as this now God's going to begin to bring in more people and he's going to begin to put more people in our individual paths but some of us been made different because of what God allowed in our lives. If we feel like, man, I've been going, I'm going through a lot of things. I, I want you to know that there's something going to lift off of several today. The hand of God is going to lift up a standard evil Father we thank you now thank you for what you said we believe in you Lord we believe in the true mercies of God we give witness to the Lord to the things that you put on our hearts to the things that you've said 